Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio. So today, we're looking at a couple of new item cards. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. There's two new item cards coming in Lost Fund that we haven't talked about yet. And although I think they're both very interesting, and I think they very much both have their place, going to be honest with you, I don't think I can do a 10-minute video on each of them. I think that would be stretching the realms of credibility. So we're going to pop them both in one video. And we're going to be starting off taking a look at the wonderfully named Wait and See Hammer. Now, of course, if you have an item card like this that doesn't exist in the video games, we never know quite what they're going to be translated as when they pop on over in Japan. But the lovely David Hockman, who of course serves as our translator on this, he said Wait and See Hammer. And I think this is wonderful, so we're totally going with it. So what does it do? You can only use this card on your first turn if you went second. Discard one energy card attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon in play. Now, what's kind of cool about this is that we've had a bunch of attacks lately from Pokemon, which basically can only be used on your first turn if you went second. What's really weird, though, is we got a Sneasel in Ultra Prism, which was exactly this. Like, literally, Sneasel reads, you can use this attack only if you go second and on your first turn. Discard an energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon. So essentially, what you do with this is you reset your opponent's first turn energy attachment. Your opponent plays an energy on turn one, you get rid of it, jobs are good. Un. And in that respect, it is great. Because it's a crushing hammer that doesn't need a coin flip. It's an enhanced hammer that doesn't need to be used on a special energy. It is a way of guaranteeing that you get the first energy attachment even if you go second. Or it's a way of making sure that your opponent loses an energy because it's not just that you get the first energy attachment it's that your opponent has one in the discard pile and sure they can use something like energy recycle the system to get it back but they've got to use that card to get it back maybe not only do you discard an energy but maybe they can't get it back maybe it's something like a buzz wall you discard their fighting energy and they don't draw one next turn or maybe they do draw one next turn but now instead of being one turn away on turn two from using a knuckle impact it's a turn four knuckle impact rather than a turn three knuckle impact that's what's so fun about this there is one huge giant downside to this card and it is a huge giant downside firstly you've got to be going second it's not the end of the world you should in half your games but secondly you've got to find it because if you don't find it on turn one of the game that's really bad if you don't find it on turn one it's a useless card i don't mean sure if you're playing something like zoroark then after turn one you can just use it as trade bait and trade it away but if you don't draw it on turn one it's pointless and don't get me wrong right we've got ways to guarantee you draw it on turn one volkner you play a volkner which has weirdly had a price spike in the last week maybe people think it's going to see more play which lets you search for a lightning energy and an item card. That's fine. But most people are going to want to play something like a turn one Lily to draw a bunch of cards. Or they're going to want to play a turn one Stevens Resolve to search for any free cards. Or a turn one Professor Realms Lecture lets you search for any free Pokemon with 60 HP or less. It's basically the new Bridget. But they're going to want to do that on turn one and that's the issue with this there's no point playing more than one wait and see hammer because if you play more than one wait and see hammer you're never going to be able to get to use it now to be fair that's not 100 percent true but it, it generally is here so you're only going to ever be playing one of these and you've got to draw on turn one but you don't want to play something like Volkner because you want to be playing a setup supporter. And that really is what makes me think Wait and See Hammer is going to see very, 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 very little play. Because I think it's just too awkward. And that's kind of sad, right? 
It's a fun looking card. But the reality of the situation here is that you're just not going to be able to find it. Now, as a side note, that it is possible for your opponent to attach multiple energy on turn one of the game. Obviously, if you go into the expanded format, you've got stuff like Max Elixir, or for Fire Decks, you've got stuff like Blacksmith. Of course, you can't just use an attack like on Solgaleo Prism Star, because your opponent's going first, and ergo, they won't be able to attack. But there are ways. I mean, in the standard format, Aqua Patch is a way that you can accelerate energy on turn one without attacking. But can anyone honestly tell me they're going to play multiples of this just in case? I don't think you are. I'm going to be giving this between two and three Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. And yes, it's generous. I love the card. I love the name. I love the idea. I just don't see it being consistent enough. The other card I want to look at in this video today is Fairy Charm Grass. And the good news is, we don't need a translation for this. Now, nominally, let's say it came from David, but we don't need a translation because we've seen these cards before. We did a video about the other fairy charms a little while ago. I will try and remember to pop a link in the description. And so we know that you can attach it as a Pokemon tool to a fairy Pokemon. And then it gives you immunity from that type of Pokemon. So previously, we saw fairy charms for Dragon, Psychic, and Fighting. Now we've got Fairy Charm Grass. And I don't like it as much as the others. Because you see, when we looked at Fairy Charm Psychic, we just went, well, Naganadal might see a fair amount of play, and the Crozma's seeing a fair amount of play. I should mention it only blocks EXs and GXs of that type, so something like a Garboda would not be blocked by this. And then we look at Fairy Charm Fighting, and we're like, Buzzwall clearly Buzzwall, and we look at Fairy Charm Dragon and we're like Rayquaza, clearly Rayquaza. So when we looked at these before, we could identify really popular GXs and EXs, mostly GXs, that your opponent might be playing of that type that this could give you protection from, or I should say from which they get protection. But what are we talking about in terms of grass Pokemon? Maybe Golisopod? Golisopod does still see a little bit of play. Um, yeah. Sidju I saw a little bit of play a while ago, but firstly, that's dropped off completely, and secondly, well, it was never really an attacker anyway. It was played for the ability. And look, Leafeon's pretty cool, and fun fact, I bought myself a Leafeon plush the other day because it was stupid cheap in home bargains. So I've got some Leafeon love right now. We all love the GX attack that allowed you to evolve. But no one's really playing them anymore. Grass GXs just aren't seeing much play. But like so many cards we talk about, this doesn't necessarily have to be great now. This is going to be an option for any fairy deck to protect against any grass type Pokemon EX or GX from now until it's rotated in, I don't know, 2021 maybe? Maybe later? So it's not like you've got to rush out and play this right this second. And I think that's the real strength of this card. It sits there just in case. Now, I should mention there are a couple of other cards that do take advantage of these. Don't forget we've got the Tapu Lele. Now, these are cards from Fairy Rive, but they'll all be coming in Lost Thunder. So even though we looked at the three previous Fairy Charms from Fairy Rise, and now this one is from Explosive Impact, Sun and Moon 8 in Japan, they're all coming in Lost Thunder, so it doesn't really matter. They're all coming in the same set. Even though Japan's had them split over two, we won't. So you've got the Tapu Lele, whereby if you attach a Fairy Charm to it, your opponent's active is confused. That's kind of cool. And then we've got the Wigglytuff, which has got an attack for a Fairy Double Colorless. 70 damage, but if you've got a Fairy Charm attached to Wigglytuff, it does 140. But of course, it does stop you using a Choice Band. Again, I'll put links to those videos in the description, so you don't need to worry too much about them now. But if you do want to go and find out all about them, then you are, of course, encouraged to go and do so. And that's pretty much it for Fairy Charm Grass. At the moment, if you're scared of Golisopod, it's a good tech. As it stands, it's not the best one. It's the worst of the four Fairy Charms, because it's the type you're least likely to be facing off against. But who knows what Grass GX is going to be released in the future. And if we ever get a really good Grass GX release that sees a lot of play, this is going to be great. Now, I do, of course, have to mention that these are in your opponent's control, by which I mean it's when they attack whether it is attached to you. So your opponent plays a field blower, and then you don't have immunity. 
But if you're playing a non-GX deck, something like Gardevoir, for instance, is your opponent going to be playing four Field Blower? They might. But if they're not, then you let them play free, and then you attach it, and you're guaranteed immunity for the rest of the game, and you basically win. Or you try and bait them into playing a Field Blower, or they end up discarding it. I mean, in a Rayquaza deck, they may well end up hitting one from the ability. And as soon as you've got more Fairy Charm dragon remaining than your opponent has field blower you basically won the game now i know i'm talking about fairy charm dragon there but the theory is the same for fairy charm grass i'm giving it free wassies for the time being because it really is a tech card that you want to have sitting in your binder because maybe you'll put it in your deck in future maybe you'll be scared of galizapod maybe you won't and that is a very definition of a free wassy card but please do remember that this is a card that could get crazy good in the future. All we need is a really good GX to be released at Scrass type. And all of a sudden this card gets much, 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 much better. And yes, I know your opponent can always play a Field Blower. But as long as you're counting their Field Blower, just wait till they've used them all, attach one and sit there. I mean, I would say laughing, but that's rude. Let's say chuckling internally or smiling contentedly knowing you're going to win the game. But I want to know what you think about both of these, ladies and gentlemen. Wait and see, Hammer and Fairy Charm Grass. We covered two cards in this video. So I think it's only fair that we get twice as many comments. Tell me what you think about both of these cards. Go nuts, but do remember the rule. Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus pods and all of that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that but by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio